Hello all, this is James Johnson, a.k.a. Sulphurblade, and I am here with Star Trek Discovery Season 2 Finale. And I'm a little late getting this review out the door. Um, there's a lot to digest here. I uh, This review is probably going to be a little shorter than some of my other reviews because I'm really not sure what to say about this episode. Most of this episode was a big fight scene, and it was a big, drawn-out, never-ending fight scene with lots of special effects, lens flares, and CGI. Um, to be honest, the, the fight in space... It was nothing like Star Trek. It, it actually reminded me of Battlestar Galactica. I mean, with all the explosions going on, it looked like flak was going up around the the starships, which there is no flak in the world of Star Trek. Um, things don't explode in outer space in the world of Star Trek because there's no oxygen in outer space to create a flame in the world of Star Trek. The world of Star Trek has always been smarter about its science fiction than this. But I digress. This is Star Trek Discovery. This is Star Trek 25% uh, different on the Bad Robot license. This is... Uh, Alex Kurtzman's version of Star Trek and while the, there was a lot of flashiness and a lot of action through the course of the episode none of it really made a lot of sense basically we had to defend Commander Burnham through the entire episode um, until she finally got to some floating piece of debris looked like a saucer section of a starship but it wasn't the discovery and it wasn't the enterprise so where this floating saucer section came from I'm not sure and all these ships are, are flying the cocoon formation around her to get her to the safe location because we, we, we have to get her to fly into the future. But when she gets far enough away, all the ships just magically return back to the battle. She lands onto this saucer section with Spock's shuttle who sits down in the saucer section, and they have a conversation in the middle of this hail of, of, of laser blasts and fire and, and all these shuttles going this way and that way and, and the Enterprise having photon torpedoes lodged in it and the Discovery barely being able to hang on to its shields. But off on the edge of the battle is Commander Burnham who is on the super secret mission to save the universe but yet she's just standing there in her time suit on the top of this floating piece of debris with Spock's shuttle having this conversation while she can't get her time suit to work and None of the enemies have bothered to fly by and attempt to shoot her or anything, even though they, they know that, that if, if she manages to pull off what she's trying to do, that they're screwed. They're, they're not going to be able to pull off the whole AI take over the galaxy thing. If, if she somehow manages to go into the future, the AI control cannot become the ultimate... Um, entity to to destroy the universe and this super AI is smart enough to know it but yet hey 
Let's completely leave her alone to do her mission. It, you know, most of this episode didn't make a lot of sense. I was also wondering how the heck she was going to manage to fly the Discovery, a starship. And all these people that wanted to go with her into the future, into the future. When she's the only person that can fit into this time suit. But we saw that at the end. She uh, she didn't actually go immediately in, into the future. Uh, Spock just figures out, you know, by the use of logic that, oh, you actually have to go do the signals now because all of this is leading up to this this point in time. And if you don't do the signals, then we're not going to win this battle and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Well, so she goes and takes her jaunt into the past to set up these signals. And then, when she gets back, it's now time to go into the future. And now her suit magically works to go into the future, even though it wasn't working to go into the future before she went into the past. But hey, you know, we'll just ignore that. The, the suit evidently has a mind of its own and, and works when it wants to. And, and then this suit is so epic, right, that it somehow manages to pull an entire starship with some sort of tractor beam through this time vortex it's creating... So that the entire starship can get sucked into the future with her and the suit. Pretty impressive, you know. What a suit. Why did they make a suit? Why did they make a, a, a suit that one person wears, like clothing, if it can somehow magically... bring a whole ship? into the future why didn't they just make a ship that could time travel instead of a suit uh, it, it seems more practical wouldn't it wouldn't a ship be a more useful thing to time travel with than a than a suit but i digress <clears throat> none of that none of that sequence made any sense whatsoever why how is this suit powerful enough to pull an entire uh, starship into the future. Because. That's pretty much what this episode sums up. Is, is because it, 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 it is. And and just deal with it and like it. Even though anyone with two, two, two brain cells is going to be scratching his head thinking, yeah, sure, right, okay. But that's mostly of what this episode was, was scratching your head saying, yeah, sure, right. Fire and flames in space. Time suits that pull ships, entire starships, into the future 3,000 years. And then we, uh, at least we did a fairly decent job retconning the Discovery. So the Discovery gets sucked into the future, never to come back to the past, or the present. And now, the entire end of Star Trek Discovery, like the final 15 minutes of it, is the Enterprise and its bridge crew debriefing at Starfleet Command where they retcon the existence of Discovery, and Spock comes up with some BS about having to uh, never talk about the Discovery ever again because of the spore drive and blah, 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 blah. It, it didn't seem to make any sense why they were... What, what the purpose behind the retcon was in the first place. Why did the existence of the Discovery need to be stricken from existence 
uh, you know, sure the spore drive itself was something that need to somehow have been retconned, but the fact that the discovery blew up in this glorious battle to save the universe from Section Thirty One, according to Starfleet Command, because that's 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 what everyone told Starfleet Command. They all got their their stories in a row and and lied to Starfleet Command. The captain of the Enterprise, Pike. Spock, all of these people lied to Starfleet Command about the Discovery going into the future. Instead, they said the Discovery got blown up. Okay, Discovery got blown up. Why couldn't you have said that it went into the future? I don't get it. I guess it would cause some sort of, of time paradox, right? If... if but there's already how many people on board the Enterprise that know that the Discovery went into the future? You know, there's at least 500 people aboard that ship. What does it matter if 500 people know? Or a million people know? I'm, I'm sure those 500 people are going to turn out to be 2,500 people and then 5,000 people because nobody can keep a secret. They're, they're going to tell their, their kid one day on their deathbed, and, and then that kid's going to tell his, you know, grandchild about this story that he heard about how the Discovery went into the future, and, and then it's going to turn into a big, you know, mythical story that nobody can prove, and, and blah, 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 blah. But I digress. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. Honestly... If we were to summarize Star Trek Discovery in a nutshell, it's that it doesn't make sense. It's never made sense. Nothing about it makes sense. It doesn't fit into Star Trek canon. It doesn't have a place in Star Trek canon. And the funniest thing about this whole pile of crap is that it came to an honest-to-God conclusion at the end of Season 2. There was a bona fide end to the crap there's no need to have a season three why why are they gonna have a season three they 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 finished the story very clear clean and concisely at the end of this season there is no need to subject us to another season of this torture none whatsoever but of course, we want to go see Burnham as the captain of the Discovery in the future, 3,000 years, because that's going to be fun to watch. And, and the other thing, you know, the end of Star Trek Discovery, season two. Is the Enterprise. Pike, Spock, the bridge of the Enterprise, number one, who's stupidly is called number one in a Starfleet debriefing. What's your name? Number one. Really? Your name is number one? No, that's what the captain calls you, and that's a nickname. That's not your actual fucking name. Ah, uh, so they can they could screw so much shit up with Star Trek canon that they can't take the character from the original pilot series number one, who had only been seen on the screen for like five minutes during that pilot episode and was referred to as number one because she was the executive officer, right? This this short little period of time made sense to have her be number one. But then to to actually have her this entire series where where she gets a considerable amount of t time, well, not as much time as many people would have liked to have seen Rebecca Romaine in this season, but, you know, she's she's at least got an 
hour or to an hour and a half of screen time in this season. And the whole time, she doesn't have a name. She is called number one from the beginning to the end. Admirals that come aboard call her number one. When she debriefs at Starfleet Command, what's your name? Number one. Really? No, that's not your fucking name. Ah, uh, they can screw up so many things with Star Trek, but they, they can't bother to give this one person a name. They, they can show us this demonic, devilized version of Spock that completely degrades him, but they can't give number one a name for a freaking debriefing? I, I don't understand Alex Kurtzman and Bad Robot and all these people behind Star Trek Discovery. They're a bunch of frucking morons. <sighs> but hey, the season's over. Woohoo! Yay! The crap is done. Oh, if you're wondering, I wasn't a big fan of this episode. But I, I kind of figured you guys might have gotten that at this point. So season two uh, has was a very interesting season. It, it started off really crap. It got better, even to a point of reaching a state of being watchable. And then it directly went straight downhill, back to crap, and finished the season as crap. That, that was season two in a nutshell. Crap got better. Actually got watchable for one episode. One episode was watchable. And then completely went down back hill, back into the gutter, and became crap again. Ah, and I said I was going to make this episode short because all it was was a bunch of stupid pew-pew in space with fires. It was like watching Battlestar Galactica with the flak cannons going. I mean, that's fine for Battlestar Galactica in a 19, you know, 70s sci-fi based show having flak cannons in outer space and fires and everything because they don't really know any better at that point. But Star Trek has always been a little more intelligent than that. But this isn't Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek, and we get we get a very clear uh, indication of that at the end. Gene Roddenberry had a few important rules uh, about Star Trek before he ever created Star Trek. When he hooked up with uh, whoever it was, his his uh, his guy who was going to do the special effects and stuff like that, he said. I have a clear vision of Star Trek, and in Star Trek, there are no flames, there are no fins, and there are no uh, fires. So like uh, propulsion streams behind a, a ship, he, he, he didn't want any of that. He, he didn't want any fins on like missiles or fins on ships because you know that's atmospheric aerodynamics it's not necessary in space you don't you don't have fires in space he wanted to portray space as space <clears throat> well at the end of the episode we get this final look at the enterprise as it's warping off to somewhere, you know. This is the very last scene of season two and and the uh, the season as a whole. The Enterprise is warping off to explore something, and we see the nacelles of the Enterprise. And there's fins coming off the goddamn nacelles of the Enterprise, and I almost, I, oh my. God. God, fins on the Enterprise, which is just like, 
if Gene Roddenberry had seen that, he, he, he's he got to be rolling over in his grave right now. The, one of the, the biggest things he never wanted to be seen in Star Trek ever was coming off the nacelles of his ship, the Enterprise. And I, I just wanted to punch myself in the head. It was like, no, they didn't just do that. That was like an ultimate fuck you to Gene Roddenberry. Oh, hey. But hey, that's Star Trek Discovery. Um, Star Trek Discovery doesn't give a crap about Star Trek canon. Um, Star Trek Discovery has to be 25% different than Star Trek, according to its license. And Star Trek Discovery was was horrible science fiction. It was it was a horrible show. It's It's been two seasons of crap. And well, thank God it's done. And I'm 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 completely blown away that this thing is going to get a third season. It doesn't need a third season. It 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 ended just fine. The story ended just fine. This season we don't need to see any more of this this sewage. But I digress. Anyway, I'm James Johnson. This has been my review of Star Trek Discovery season finale. Uh, if you like my content, please leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, peace.